Hi there, welcome to this economics revision video on quantitative skills. In this one, we're looking at how to convert nominal data into real data. So why do economists need to do this? It's to allow us to get a better sense of changes in the underlying economy. So there are a number of different terms that we need to think about here before we take a look at a super simple example. Nominal data is just current data in current prices. Whereas real data is data that takes into account the effect that inflation has on that data. We would generally talk about that as being data at constant prices. So if you are presented with data in an economics exam, typically data relating to GDP, then you can see this expressed in two different ways. It may well be the case that you are told that the data is nominal or that it is real. Alternatively, it might be the case that the data is, you're told that the data is presented in current prices. Now that needs to set off a little alarm bell in your head and tell you that that actually means nominal, or it could say that it's constant prices and that tells you that that data is real data. So do watch out for those phrases. Now to take a really simple example to help us understand why this is important, imagine that last year I consumed that bar of chocolate. The price last year suppose was £1. This year however the price is £1.20. Now the danger if we use just nominal, uh, nominal numbers and, and nominal terms, it may look as though I have consumed 20% more chocolate this year. So if I've spent £1.20 this year compared to £1 last year, one conclusion, incorrect, would be that I have consumed 20% more chocolate. So what we need to do is get to the bottom of what I have really consumed. My real consumption is still just one bar. Now the chances are I would express that in the terms of last year, so my consumption remains £1 worth in real terms. We're going to look at how this is more likely to be presented. We're going to look at GDP data and this data that we have on the screen is the UK's GDP data and this is in nominal GDP, nominal millions of pounds. So if we just take a quick look at that data chart and think about what that means, if for example we look at the data for 1955 at the top of our chart, the nominal GDP is 19,416 million of pounds. Now that is the value of what was produced in the UK in 1955 expressed in the prices in the economy in 1955. If we look at the same thing for say 1980, then the amount that was produced in the UK in nominal terms was 259,962 million pounds in 1980 prices. So in a sense there, what you can see is quite a good representation of what we mean by data in current prices. It's the prices in the economy at the year shown. Okay, so to re recap, it's GDP at current prices. Now what that means is it would be incorrect for us as economists to conclude, for example, that the UK's GDP in 2018 was 109 times larger than in 1955. What we need to do is work out what proportion of that increase in GDP is actually due to underlying inflation and underlying increase in the general level of prices. So we're going to build up to this slowly over the course of the next couple of minutes. Now, hopefully you can see on the screen there that I've added in an additional column to my table. The column that I've added in is called the GDP deflator. Now, you don't actually need to worry too much about this at all for A-level. All it is is just another measure of inflation in the economy. What you tend to see as an A-level economist we would be, for example, the consumer price index, the CPI, or the retail price index, the RPI. Those are just measures of inflation for things that households would tend to buy. The GDP deflator, however, is an inflation measure that actually looks at the prices of absolutely everything in the economy. So it's a much more holistic measure of inflation. The principle here doesn't really matter. You don't need to worry too much about what we mean by the GDP deflator. I just want you to focus on how we would actually use it. 
Okay, so just having a quick look at the data that we're given there, what we can say is that the prices in 2018, reflected by the GDP deflator, is around 23 times bigger than it was in 1955 when our index value was 4.26. So clearly prices have gone up 23 times, nominal GDP looks like it has gone up about 109 times. So what we need to do is work out actually what the change in overall real GDP is. So how do we do that? Well, the theoretical formula that you need is the one that is shown on the screen. Real GDP is equal to the nominal GDP divided by the price index. Now, in practice, most price indices have been multiplied by 100. Um, and that really just makes it easier for us to interpret. Humans don't tend to like working with decimals. So we tend to, we, we generally, for the GDP deflator or the RPI or the CPI, we have multiplied the numbers that we get by 100. So when you are given the index of prices and you're told that it's, um, that it is an index and you have a period equal to 100, we know that in a sense what we need to do is adjust for that um, multiplication by 100 and use the formula that is on the screen at the bottom for you. So it's real GDP equals the nominal GDP and you divide that by the price index divided by 100. Do make sure to use the brackets function on your calculator if you are not confident in just dividing a number by 100 in your head. So let's take a look um, at how this works. So we've added in an extra column to our table here. The other three columns remain identical to what you've seen already. And we're going to try and work out what the right measure of output is in each of those years. Um, now we're going to take uh, 2018 as in a sense our base year. That's what we're told. Um, in reality, it could be any year at all. Economists have no set rule or formula for working out which year is the base year. But in this case, we're given this data. Um, this is all from the, um, from the ONS. This is what they currently are working with. Let's take a look at how we do this calculation for 1955, the very top row in our table. So you can see all I've done, I've written down my workings. It's always a really good idea to do this just so that you avoid making careless errors. So I've taken my nominal GDP, 19,416, and I've divided it by 4.26, which is my GDP deflator, divided by 100. And then in millions of pounds, that gives me the number that you have on the screen there. So 455,775 million pounds. Okay, so what that means is that our real GDP in 2018, which was 2,117,724 million pounds is actually only 4.6 times bigger than it was. Okay. If you like, you can pause the video here and just have a go at calculating real GDP for the other years shown. You don't necessarily have to do all of them to practice, just pick a couple to have a go at. Don't worry, you've got some answers there. So you can check your answers against mine. Remember, these are all in millions of pounds, just like the nominal GDP was. But it's really useful to go away and have a little practice at this, just to make sure you are completely confident. Don't forget that in an exam, it might well be the case that you are given the real GDP values and the price index, and you have to work backwards and calculate nominal GDP. All you have to do is simply rearrange the formula that I've already given you. Just plug the numbers in and rearrange and hopefully it should be nice and straightforward. Don't forget to check out our other videos on quantitative skills for economics A-level. Thanks for watching.